ladies and gentlemen good day and welcome to solar active pharma sciences limited q2 and h1 fy25 earning conference call as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touch tone phone please note that this conference is being recorded and now hand the conference over to mr vijay thank you and over to you sir thank you. very good afternoon to all of you and thank you for joining us today for solara active pharma sciences earnings conference call for the second quarter and happy year ended financial year 2025 today we have with us arun solara's founder and non executive director purvank md and ceo and arun kumar bhaskaran cfo to share the highlights of the business and financials of the quarter I hope you've gone through our results release and the quarterly investor presentation, which have been uploaded on our website as well as the stock exchange website. The transcript for this call will be available in a week's time on company's website. Please know that today's discussion will be forward-looking nature and must be viewed in relation to the risk pertaining to our business. After the end of this call, in case you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to the investor relations team. I now hand over the call to Arun to make his opening remarks. Thank you, Abhishek, and good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining our. Q2 earnings call. Uh, to start off, we are extremely pleased with the progress that we have made in the last two quarters post our reset. Solara is uh, calibrated its growth, uh, focusing on profitability, and at 50.5% gross margins, we have now reached our historical highs uh, with an improvement of 620 basis points Y on Y, and approximately the same number Q on Q. Uh, as I mentioned the last time, our focus is on profitable growth uh, and at cost containment. And all of this have played through well for our EBITDAs to be reporting at 61 crores, a growth of almost 46% Q on Q and 61% Y on Y. Of course, it's not a comparable quarter given uh, a disastrous performance that we had uh, in a comparable quarter last year. Having said that, uh, the company is completely reset uh, with this disciplined approach to business. We're ex excited that our revenues uh, from the regulated markets now constitute 76% of our business. Uh, growth uh, is a function of setting the house on order, which we have. And uh, we are, in spite of that, we are in line to meet our outlook across all parameters. Um, so revenues in H1 are approximately almost 45, 47% of the annual guidance, uh, which is uh, so, so also gross margin guidance. EBITDA at 61 crores, and if you equalize that for the next two quarters, uh, we should be comfortably within the EBITDA guided for the, for the whole year. We're very confident that our Q4 will uh, be uh, within the guided numbers of uh, 80 to 90 crores of EBITDA and trending at around 20% uh, EBITDA. Uh, in H2, we've already moved our EBITDA percentage points uh, significantly from 11.6% in Q1 to 17.7%, uh, which is akin to the uh, generic catalog generic industries business, but given that we are heavily focused on the regulated markets and with all the actions that we have introduced with cost containment, uh, we're very confident of meeting those uh, exit quarterly outlooks too. Overall, uh, a very pleasing outcome for uh, and a strong comeback. Um, so also the balance sheet, focus on the balance sheet, including the debt book, um, adjusted for the uncalled uh, rights uh, between the next two years. Uh, we are in a comfortable debt to EBITDA of 102 times, and this will only improve with if we hit our guidance it will be less than 1.5 times. Uh, one of the key actions that we took was our uh, uh, cost containment, and I'm very pleased to report that our costs have come down quite significantly without compromising uh, compliance of quality. Uh, we have also reported three significant quality events, uh, including European approvals for two of our plants and, uh, and an FDA approval for our R&D center. Uh, which also does some work related to our findings. So overall, um, a good outcome. Uh, as, as all of you know, almost 
33, 35% of our total capacities was not called with our Vizac plant being not called while we retrofitted the plant or while we are in the process of retrofitting the other. Uh, we do not believe that there is a need for us to have a dedicated facility for ibuprofen, a second dedicated facility. So as we communicated the last time, we, we are converting that plant into a multi-purpose plant, including HAPI, and we should be hypotensy API. So we should be in a strong position uh, to get that plant back on, on stream in Q1 of FY26. And we probably have three full quarters in FY26 when that business will start adding to our overall growth. So this year our focus is calibrated growth, uh, focus on margin expansion, customer satisfaction, and compliance, which uh, we are on the right track. And then in FY26, uh, we will have that driving the growth to the next level. So I think uh, we have um, probably exceeded our targets by a quarter uh, internally, and which is great. Uh, but having said that, we still have got lots of work to do. And we do appreciate uh, the patience and the support our investors have provided uh, in these difficult times that we just passed by. Uh, but we are now looking at a very strong Solara coming back to its historical highs in the next two quarters, and I'm sure that uh, it will be a very rewarding ride for everybody. Thank you all, and we are more than happy, uh, like uh, like Abhishek mentioned, as my colleagues uh, Purwank and um, Arun, uh, who's our CFO on the call, uh, assisted by Raghavan. And if you have questions, please do not hesitate to ask us. And like Abhishek mentioned, if you don't and you have them later, please email them to us and we will respond. Thank you. So now we can take the Q&A. Sure. Sir. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question, may press star and one on that assumed telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Tushar Manudane from Motila Losar Financial Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, am I audible? Yes, Tushar. Uh, sir, just on the gross margin, firstly, uh, <clears throat> sequentially the regulated market share has been stable at 76%, but still we've seen the jump in gross margin from 445 to almost 505 So if you could just explain that. Well, it's mainly leading to our focus on cost containment. As you can see, our OPEX has dropped uh, almost by 40 crores, uh, although in that quarter we had by that. But if you look at uh, a like-to-like -like quarter, Q424 at 130 crores to Q2 at 113, uh, cost focus has been a, a very important uh, factor in terms of capacity utilization, planning, uh, and cycle time management. So that is what is lifting. So on the gross margin side, you know, not the OPEX, on the gross margin, or the before OPEX. Okay, sorry. Yeah, so if you if you look at our portfolio, while 76% of our business comes from a regulated market, we do have a higher focus on the more profitable products. And uh, we do have now some of our customers launching some of the products that we had developed a couple of years ago. Uh, so those are niche, uh, small volume products at significantly higher margins. But also our uh, margins were positively impacted by a higher crams business that we reported in the quarter. Okay. And sir, uh, now taking this 100 to almost 400 crores from 350, 347 on, so any specific product uh, you would want to highlight, which will take this revenue trajectory uh, up? Uh, indicate products, but our polymers division is not fully really sold for capacity, so we do several polymers, one of the few players in the in India. Uh, we are fully sold for capacity, and Vizag, in fact, is being retrofitted to add more capacities around that line of items. It's a, a very complex chemistry, not many players out of India. We supply uh, a lot of the players. In fact, we supply almost all the a and a players in the U.S. market for this product. We see increasing demand as the innovator loses market share. And um, 
it's, it's just focusing on the right product, right customer base. All it. Thanks, and all it. Sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aman Sarvi from iWealth Management. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Yes. Yes, sir. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. So, as we have mentioned in our press release that our regulated market contribution is at around 76 percent. So, sir, this is to be the peak contribution in the past. So, is this the ideal peak, or are we anticipating to go further? Regulated market contribution can go higher. No, I think I think we are comfortable at these levels. Uh, we obviously are not comfortable with the revenue size. We we have enough opportunities to grow the number from 347 to we have already guided for a Q4 exit run rate at 400 crores. So if the percentage of the rent market will remain at that, then obviously that will have add further benefits to the gross margin and EBITDA. Got it, sir. Got it. And so another question was that how many DMS filings are we targeting? We had a large portfolio of around 70 to 75 DMS. How many launches are we targeting per annum? So to be very candid, we are not focusing on too many new DMFs. Our focus has been to improve the cost price, cost of our existing DMFs through very active and rigorous cost improvement programs and onboarding customers for existing uh, DMFs. But that notwithstanding, we continue to develop new products and we have how many filings? We, we already have 95 US. So how many this year we have? Filed? So around four to five filings. Yeah. So we only have, we'll have about four to five filings because the focus is to try and commercialize as much as our existing portfolio rather than building new ones. Uh, for vanity, we are focusing on building uh, a nice portfolio of products or bringing back some of the DMS which are not very active. Yeah. Understood, sir. So only three to four years, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Thank you so much. That's it from my view. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amrish Kumar from GeoFear Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, I have one question on the OPEX part uh, that has been brought down significantly. And now it was only 114 crores last quarter. So, how do we see this trajectory going forward? Do we consider this, this as a base now? And further uh, you know, improvement will be from operating leverage? No, so you need to understand that we actually mothballed WISAC, which is almost a 40, 45 crore uh, spend uh, in, uh, in the last financial year, uh, which means that the it's not necessarily like to like, but our base uh, OPEX. Uh, which was approximately 130 crores, 135 crores, has come down to 115 crores. So that's a good news. And uh, we should be able to bring that down a little more. Uh, but next year, then, I will go back uh, to not to peak operations, but at least for three quarters, we'll have peak operations. So to address your point, it, uh, I think the current legacy business, we should probably have another 10, 12 odd crores of savings in the next two quarters. But in Q4, in, in FI26, we'll go back. And when we add by that, we will probably get back to about 130, 135. But it just delivers a very significant new revenue opportunity because by that is our biggest plant in terms of capacity. Mm, okay, sir. Okay, so then on the revenue growth part, sir, now that you have mentioned that Vizag will be in full operation for three quarters in the next year, so if we, if we you know, remove that out, what should we be, be considering the revenue growth for next year, FI26, because you have said that fourth quarter number would be about 400 crores, and that is typically our best quarter for the year. So should we be considering that as a base or? Yes, yeah, sir, I'm actually going to learn to accept the company guidance. We guide it for the Q4 outcome, right? Let's get there. In Q4, we can have this conversation what 26 would look like. And this is willing to give you a 26 outlook. Got it, sir. Thank you so much for these numbers. Thank you so much.
Thank you. The next question is from the line of Monisha from Antic Stock Broking Limited. Please go ahead. Yes, hi. Uh, just wanted to you know take your view on the pricing uh, in the API portfolio for us as well as the industry. Then I uh, so Anisha, it's not about pricing, right? If the question is that if you shift your focus to direct markets, you obviously get a better pricing. I just think that we have reset our business from being all over the place to be very focused on what we want to achieve. And the numbers that you're seeing is a reflection of a course correction and not necessarily the market dynamics. Uh, considering that 76% of our business is regulated, which effectively means that we are the primary supplier in most PMS or more than half of that 76% goes to Big Pharma, there's stability in our pricing, right? So it's not, it's not that we are seeing a pricing pressure because we are not challenging anybody to take higher market share. We have just course corrected our business from what we used to do very well, uh, to what we are getting, trying to get back to do well again. So I don't think these ratios of improved cross margins uh, should be a reflection of price improvements. It's how this, the company was in a particular spot and how we are turning it around. Mm, okay. And also, you mentioned that you know Cranes uh, was a reasonable contribution for this quarter. Can you highlight as to how much was the uh, you know revenue contribution from Cranes uh, this quarter? Still suboptimal. I mean, it's it's a better quarter than last, uh, but we are still less than a hundred crores on an annualized basis on our Cranes business. But it is growing, and it will grow rapidly uh, because we have seeded a lot of customers. We have uh, we started getting business, and this will be an important part of the business two to three years from now. Uh, but as we speak, uh, we are very happy with our, uh, the logos that we have managed to convert, the type of products that we do. Uh, and, uh, you know, it takes time for our partners to qualify us, uh, to be on their files. It's a, it's a, it's a big process, but we're very delighted with the, the progress we are making here. Perfect. And uh, lastly, what should be our tax rate assumption for next year and uh, even for FI25? So we are currently at zero tax uh, because of our carry forward losses. And yeah, for one more year, I guess. So from 25, should we assume it will be a 25% tax rate? Uh, sorry, from FI26, should we assume it will be a 25% tax rate? FI26 also zero, Manish. Oh, okay. From 27, it will change. Oh, yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of your B. Sharma, who's an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, sir, I have three questions. Uh, the first question is our net debt is below 500 crore, taking into account uncalled rice issue money of 222 crore. How do you see our net debt going faster? Will, will our company, like Solara, be net cash positive by next year? Not by next year, uh, but I think we need probably a year and a half because we also have CapEx to grow right back. Uh, we plan to run our CapEx programs through internal approvals as we have already communicated. Uh, but I think by FY27, we should be in a very strong position or very close to being net cash. Okay, so my second question is, what is our top, like, top five and ten products contribution to our revenue? Or is there any risk of some prices of ibuprofen? Can it go? Or is it down? Or at the current level, will it be sustainable? Well, I don't, I, we don't have any specific, I mean, ibuprofen clearly is our number one product, and, and, and this group of ibuprofen is almost 25% of our global revenues uh, for a long, long period of time, more than 20 years. And I think it'll stay at that because we do supply to some of the bigger names that consume ibuprofen, especially the branded companies. Uh, we do not, uh, we do have several other products, but we don't call out any of our products. Uh, of course, the ibuprofen and its range is our biggest product. Uh, we do not, outside of that, we're not very dependent on any one single Portfolio. Ibuprofen also we have delisted by getting into several analogs of ibuprofen and therefore um, we have, uh, you know, kind of moved into derivatives 
and a lot of other products within that broken group uh, and value adding it by having direct compressible grade as it was said, but overall our historical dependency on ibuprofen has reduced dramatically with a shift in our tactics and our strategy over the last uh, six months. Okay. So my last question is, other CDN players are talking about uh, benefit from biosecure. Will Solara benefit from it? If yes, how? Well, um, I think uh, the Biosecurity Act is very specific to biologics to a very large extent. There's a China plus one factor that companies are considering, uh, but I don't think the Biosecurity Act has got anything to do with APIs or formulations. Uh, but having said that, um, companies are reviewing strategically at their board levels on sourcing strategies and supply chain security. Uh, clearly, we are seeing benefits out of that, but is it a flood? The answer is no. Okay, okay. So uh, just, uh, just a clarification, uh, Ibuprofen is a 25% of our company, and but you didn't mention anything about our top five products, right? What is the contribution you didn't mention, right? I didn't by design, yeah. Okay, so ibuprofen is at 25%. Okay, sir. Congratulations, sir, uh, on margins improvement. And thank you. All the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Daval Shah from Direct Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, am I audible, sir? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, so my question is regarding the Wisex facility. Uh, so, uh, just want to understand. Uh, post the Wysac uh, uh, refurbishment, what we are doing, uh, what will be the gross block uh, uh, at Wysac? Gross block is about uh, 500 crores. 500 odd crores, that block is about 250 crores. And I think we have a capex plan for about 100 crores. Okay, so existing gross block is 500 and plus 100 you'll be adding. That's right. Okay. And uh, you mentioned the last call that uh, the Vizek facility, uh, since you are modeling it and creating a new and a much better improved uh, facility, uh, and also focusing on cramps, uh, so the uh, the asset terms should be uh, a, a bit better than the existing uh, asset base. Okay. Well, currently, the if you minus Vizek, we have one of the industry's leading asset terms. But uh, Wysak will probably take at least two years before it uh, it turns at least one, one, two, or one point two times. It will take us at least two years to get there. Okay, two years to get to uh, one point two times. Okay, okay, and uh, uh, so in, in the last call, our contribution uh, for crimes was mentioned around five to eight percent of sales. And the target was to achieve 10% for 26. Uh, uh, what is the number for second quarter? And uh, are we on track there in, on, uh, for 26 to achieve 10%? So that was, we don't give specific numbers by quarter. I did mention to a previous question that we expect revenues to be at around 100 crores this year. And mm -hmm. when a guided number of 1,500 crores, that is about 7 to 8%, as you would, you would appreciate. And yes. then it will grow from there. So we are on track to meet those two guidance, sub guidances, if you may. Got it, got it. And how many DMS we plan to uh, file uh, over the next uh, two year period? If you will be able to fight you Currently, we have a plan of only about four to five products because we have uh, a tremendous uh, book, asset book of DMFs, which we are focused on bringing back to market first before we file new ones and find new customers. Got it. Okay, then. thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Raji Chajani, who's an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, sir. Uh, I just have a couple of questions. So uh, my questions actually revolve around the WISAC facility. In our presentation, I think we've highlighted our strategy around WISAC. So if you could provide more details as to what molecules are we targeting from this facility, 
and I think we've also guided that to start this facility by Q1. So what kind of under recoveries will we have in FY26 from this facility? Yeah, I can answer the second question. We will have zero under recoveries in, in FY26. And as regards products, we did mention that we'll continue to make ibuprofen and derivatives as a second source, but in a much smaller quantity. And we are moving our polymers, uh, we are increasing our polymers business. We don't give specific product names in polymers, but we are the largest producers of specific polymers in India, which is used for pharmaceutical use. And we will be expanding our capacities in Y to include our increased demand for that portfolio. Got it, sir. This was helpful. I'll get back in the queue in case of more questions. Thank you. Thank you. Next question. So from the line of Nitesh Dutt from Burman Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, sir, I have one uh, question. Uh, so uh, we have seen a remarkable turnaround over the last 6 to 12 months. Uh, would be really helpful if you give some commentary around what have been the changes that have taken place uh, right uh, under the course correction measures that you are talk talking about and what has uh, tangibly changed. So for example, uh, has there been a substantial change in your product portfolio? Uh, similarly, the OPEX that you have reduced, um, what kind of measures you have taken to achieve that? Yeah, so I think I think primarily it is governance, 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 right? So you have heightened governance uh, in terms of course correction. Second, uh, we don't change revenues unless they are profitable. So we have governance around it. Um, we have a very focused approach on cost optimization and cost improvement programs. Uh, very standard, which most companies in a situation that we were would do. Uh, I just think that our oversight on and with, with the team that we have, and Pulvan and the rest of the team uh, do a good job, and I take all the credit. Got it. Thank you. That's, that's all I wanted to ask. Thank you. The next question is from line of Shaurya Punyani from Arja Partners. Please go ahead. Hi, I'm Audible. Yes, yes sir. Go ahead. Yeah. So in the last call, you mentioned about entering into peptides. So is there any update on that? Uh, the update is yes, we have entered. Mm -hmm. OK. Do we see any sort of uh, you know, potential, any potential you can give something like that? Well, I, I think so. It's a, see, everybody talks about peptides. Uh, it's, it's more fashionable than anything else. Uh, everybody is in it. Uh, we are uh, in the value chain of the peptide manufacturing for some of the larger players. We don't do any work with Big Pharma, uh, if that was one of the questions. Uh, and it's early days, but we are in the peptide space, yes. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ankit Minoja from Aditi Ventures Family Office. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, good afternoon. Uh, the response uh, to the previous participants uh, that the GM expansion has been driven less by pricing and uh, more by regulated markets was well understood. But uh, I just wanted to understand from your expertise of the industry and view of current input costs, uh, what do you think API pricing looks like uh, in the coming six months? Well, we work in an industry where we can't predict what happens next week, so you're asking me to answer an impossible question. I personally think uh, in, a, in a general view, the API pricing stability is a function of supply chain disruption. So if you chase volumes and you chase the same DMF that many Indian companies have, uh, obviously you find pressures in pricing. We have that. We have seen with new entrants in ibuprofen ourselves facing uh, significant price challenges on key products. I think there's been method in the madness and pricing has more or less stabilized across. So I would say we have probably, to answer the question differently, 
probably we have hit the bottom. Uh, I think at these rates, uh, companies like ours and many others will, will aggressively focus on cost reduction, uh, cost of goods, manufacturing improvements, using newer technologies like enzymatic routes and technologies of scale to get here. Um, and I think that's what the whole industry is doing. So as price pressures go down, there's a lag between cost catch-up and uh, margin expansion. Uh, and I think uh, that's what most of us do to survive in this business. But I think uh, generally there is an understanding that is prevalent in the formulation business that supply chain disruptions do cause very significant uh, challenges to the industry. And I think there is reasonable uh, logic being applied and prices are more or less reasonably stable. Okay. Yeah, thanks for that. Um, and uh, secondly, uh, in the last con call, uh, uh, we had mentioned uh, an EBITDA run rate of uh, 260 to 290 crores, which I believe uh, we are now mentioning as 230 to 260 crores. So has there been something uh, happened in this quarter which you kind of... Uh, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, Nothing has changed in our outlooks. We keep our outlooks exactly the same. Sorry, so um, are we saying that uh, this... Uh, I'm saying uh, that your data point is wrong, and if you could give us where you got that information from, that would be useful. Okay, sure. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Parveen Kumar, who's an individual investor. Please go ahead. Am I audible, sir? Yes. Okay, so for, first of all, uh, congratulations for great uh, set of results and uh, the kind of, you know, uh, turnaround we have done in last couple of quarters. And uh, my question is with regard to the last con call, uh, Q1 FI25, where we have mentioned about the peptide manufacturing. So my question is, ki, we are making that for our, your, our uh, set of companies or for other place too? No. Solara does not make peptides for any group companies. So it is for our uh, group only, sir. No. As of now. In no, we don't. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sheikh Mohammed, who's an individual investor. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity and congratulations to the great success quarter on quarter. Uh, my question is regarding the impact of side group closing the ibuprofen plant in the America. Uh, what are the issues of ibuprofen ranging worldwide? Is there any impact of that? The plant that was closed in the U.S. was a small plant from Alamalai. It's a tiny facility. It's, it doesn't. It's not a needle mover at all in terms of global capacities, and it doesn't make any impact to any any of us who are in the business. Sir, I think it is 5,000 MPA annual capacity. What are the, what are the total? Yeah, 5,000 MPA is nothing uh, because the current demand um, is, is uh, I mean, the new capacities that have been added is more than 20,000 tons um, globally in the last two years. So 5,000 tons going off is not going to change anything. But uh, uh, U.S. is the regulated market, right? So, so all the players in ibuprofen shake are FDA approved. Okay, so there is not not much impact of uh, that and closure. No. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sheikh. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Thank you all. Thank you for your time and appreciate your time today. And if you have any questions, like I said, please write to Po one or to the relations, investor relations team and we'll be happy to respond. Thank you all. Thank have you. a good day. Thank you. On behalf of Solar Active Pharma Sciences Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.